<laughs> Hello fellow truth seekers. So I am sitting here in backyard. I've got Marco Polo with me. Say hello Marco Polo. We just call him Marco. He was the first newsletter to go exploring and he hasn't stopped since. And uh, yeah, you'll probably see him looking around for, he likes squirrels. He's always looking up in the trees for squirrels and uh, he might take off, but we'll try. Okay, you know, a planet necessarily. Ah! Oh shit! God! God! Hello, fellow truth seekers. I hope you're all doing well. So I am in my backyard. Uh, you will hear sounds from around the neighborhood. Please just look out for them. So for those who are new, I go over the astrology first and then I do the cards. If you're not interested, which is very interesting, you should say, but if you're not interested in hearing it, there's a timestamp down below. So we are discussing time period of November 23rd through December 6th and man it's beautiful it really is like um hello <laughs> I've got a kitty cat coming up to, to say hello um it's like it's all setting us up to pinpoint what our desires are what we want to manifest and how to do it. So we start off with Mercury and Venus in Scorpio. And Mercury in Scorpio is making all of these sextiles with the, those planets in Capricorn. You know, and it's like all this, it's bringing up all this stuff. You know, it's, it's like these thoughts and, and it's, it's Scorpio. So it's desire right it's about our deepest desires and we also have venus there once again you know it's it's really bringing up those deep-seated desires and you know it's very practical making those sextiles with uh, the capricorn planets uh so then hi honey <laughs> And then we have Sun and Sagittarius, which is optimism, right? Expansiveness. You know, we're really feeling like we've got what it takes. We can see the big picture. We can see, you know, we have this confidence. We have this optimism that we can make it happen. And then, a uh, day before the full moon in Gemini, we have Neptune turning direct in Pisces. And this is about our dreams once again, right? And I think that this, this is really a turning point where we're getting uh, some, some clarity. And <laughs> um, the next day we have that full moon in Gemini at eight degrees. Now, you know, we've been talking about the strength and this time I really feel like, you know, it's, it's like Gemini is about kind of, um, the thing, thinking about those things that are closer to home where Sagittarius is the more expansive thought, right? It's kind of like the humble humility aspects versus the confidence, right? the small versus the large. And I think that this is something that we're go really going to be honing during this time. Now, the Sabian symbol for this uh, full moon is a medieval archer stands with the ease of one wholly sure of himself, bow in hand, his quiver filled with arrows. Hey, 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 stop that, stop that. Hey, come here. <laughs> cats inside outside they're always wreaking havoc all right so i think it's very interesting that it's a medieval archer 
right? We've been going through like the darkest time probably any of us have ever experienced um, you, you know, as a whole. And it's an archer. This is, this, the sun is in Sagittarius. Now every time something hits this point in Gemini is not going to have any, you know, necessarily having anything to do with Sagittarius. So that's really interesting. Now, it also reminds me of the Eight of Wands, right? Because it's Gemini, which is all about communication. And the Eight of Wands is Mercury and Sagittarius, so it, they work hand in hand. And I feel like this, you know, and it's a, it's a quiver full of arrows, full of them. Not just, you know, he doesn't just have one arrow in the bow that he's getting ready to shoot. He has a whole quiver, right? So this is about the small steps, and I feel like we're taking, you know, we're starting small, and we're, we're progressively getting bigger. We're progressively getting more confidence right now in addition to that the next day I do believe um, hi I'm back <laughs> so yeah the next day at least uh, if not the next day I, I think it's it there's only 30 days in November um, December 1st we have mercury moving into Sagittarius Right, like, are there any more uh, synchronicities? So yeah, look out for synchronicities. They're gonna be showing up. They're going, you're going to be getting like confirmations you're on the right track. Um, hints about where you need to go, right? And things are gonna start picking up. Right? I'm feeling some Mercury in Sagittarius. I'm feeling some Eight of Wands action going on here. <laughs> so, I think we're going to be feeling good for the most part. You know, not that there won't be any hiccups, but if there are hiccups, they're just to show us where we need to be heading. What little, uh, I was thinking that, that, that I wouldn't be having problems with my words right now. Um, Adjustments, what little adjustments we need to make. So, yes, there it is. <laughs> Let's see what the cards have to say. Hello, Taurus. I hope that you're all doing well. So my name is Christiana. Welcome to anyone new and welcome back to those who've been here before happy to have all of you here so this is for the time frame of november 23rd through december 6th i am using a little bit of a different uh setup uh, mostly the same but i'm i'm tossing the shocker cards at least for a while we'll see if they come back or not but um yeah i'm a gemini uh i don't usually stick to one thing for so long so they made it a long time but I i'm needing to try something different so all right let's see what happens here for taurus please sun moon rising November 23rd through December 6th, please, Spirit. Okay. So we got Flap the Footer and Mick the Myomancer coming out. Look for the signs. Stay grounded. Okay. Got the Sage. Oh, the Singer of Connection and Penelope Dreamweaver down below. Oh, look at that. We have the fairy who was kissed by the pixies at the bottom of the deck. So, it does seem like there's love in the air for you guys.
I like to have everything in view of the camera. Bear with me. All right. Looks pretty good. This is sage energy. You know, it's number 19, so I can't help but think of the sun when I see it. But it's, it's like the sun and the hermit combined, right? And I'm even like... As soon as I said that, I, I was drawn to the, like, yellow here, it, like, right? There's a lot of yellow in his beardy area, <laughs> we'll say. There's a sense of, you know, the... I want to say... Wisdom of age, but also the optimism and energy of the youth. Six of Stones came out. It's face down, so it tells me that either this is an internal victory or something that you're not really expecting. Right? I'm almost seeing this singer of connection, which... Ah, oh, wow, look at that. We have this line going down here, right? The singer of connection, the line is moving down into his head and coming down. It's like, you know, this of course is what you're consciously moving towards or you think is um, available and possible during this time. And I'm getting this connection with spirit more than anything, right? Like getting downloads that you then like ground into the earth. And this is like part of how you're manifesting your dream. This is Penelope Dreamweaver down here in your uh, subconscious. All right. Yeah, we've got eight of blooms at the bottom. And for me, especially with this card, it's about going deep, right? Going deep. All right, let's see what else comes out of here. Mmm, the lovers. <laughs> the three of plumes. And I'm definitely getting, um, you know, this has really been coming out for me as healing. Yes, that there's, there's pain involved in looking at it sometimes. But that pain is what heals. Beautiful. Okay. Page of plumes down below. The plumes are swords in this deck. Nine of bones coming up in your air element. So independent thinking. This is your fire element. Knight of plumes. Taking that truth. Right? This truth that you're getting from... Uh, the inner work and putting it into action. Okay. The emperor. Nice. In the earth element. Taking control. And I love this elephant as the emperor. And especially for you guys. Right? We see all these like mountains. Because it's got a very earthy feel to it. In spite of it being fire. All right. And king of stones. Over here in the water element. This is really, really beautiful energy. Okay, let's see. Past. God of Plumes. Yeah, I was noticing there is a, an, uh, there is a lot of air, right? We've got a lot of air here. So, thinking. It feels, though, with this sage energy here and everything else that's supporting it, that it's... Uh, especially with this God of Plumes here, <clears throat> like it's a new way of thinking for you almost, right? Um, and I, I get called back to a couple of readings ago when you all were all up in your head. Maybe you all have been practicing that, you know, um, uh, what are, uh, what is it? Are my thoughts useful? How do they behave? You've been practicing that or you practiced it enough that you're subconsciously 
looking at your thoughts, right? Yeah, because we've got the page of plumes here, which is kind of a watcher. And that's really transforming the way that you think, right? We have this caterpillar and the, how would you, is it chrysalis? Is it chrysalises? I'm not sure how you, chrys, chrysali, perhaps? Uh, so these are like new ideas, but it's like, um, you're watching your thoughts. It's like a whole new way of thinking. And this is like helping you manifest. Lovely. All right. The future. It's starting to come out here. Night of Blooms. All right. And I love this right here. We've got, because you are earth, right? We have the sage here, which is very earthy energy to me. With that fire behind it though, right? The emperor here. And we've got stones, king of stones, knight of plumes, that action, that independent thought, that fire. And then the knight of blooms in the, the future, which is about the heart, right? This balance between the head and the heart here with the lovers. I'm loving this. All right. Down below, we have the eight of bones. That would be the eight of uh, pentacles. Oh, with god of stones underneath that. Seven of plumes, doesn't bother me. Five of plumes, two of bones, five of bones. Okay, in the world, right. Because, okay, like all of the stuff underneath, you know, it's like a new way of being, a new way of thinking. And all these, these shifts that are occurring, the fives to me right now, I'm kind of surprised you don't have any in here. It's but and that's telling me that you guys are kind of really because we do have Uranus and your sign, right? <laughs> Moving backwards as of right now. So it's kind of it, which it that makes a lot of sense why you're kind of boom. It's almost like a review, kind of watching, looking, exploring. And, um, yeah, it's, it's these shifts and they've really been coming through as shifts to me today. I got the five of bones, didn't even blink. All it was saying was shift the way that you're doing things, right? <laughs> I had done Aries last night and it was, it kind of felt a little fumbly, right? With this new setup that I'm doing. And I was thinking about doing it over again. I was like, no, it's fine. Cool. Leave it. But you know, you know what shift you need to make, right? And then that's it. <laughs> All right. This is going to be your overall, the overall energy of this time period for you guys. Earth, beautiful earth element. And that's so funny because, and it's a 22. So I like that. Uh, Aries got the water element. There are only four elements. Well, there's five elements because they include spirit in this, but that's interesting. And then we have the desert at the bottom. So it's kind of like this visionary, right? Downloady kind of uh, energy, but also with the, yeah, because we've got the summer underneath it, which is about kind of like moving between worlds. So yeah. Absolutely. Okay, cool. But of course, you know, that in the desert, it's like this world we're living in right now kind of feels, you know, like we've been deserted in a way. But that is actually what's kind of, it's causing us to, this earth element to be malleable, right? I mean, we see all this movement in this card and the author of this book talks about how the earth element is the only element that really interacts with all the other elements right it's like i think uh, i immediately think about uh trees swaying in the wind you know water when you pour it onto earth makes it muddy right clay that you can shape 
and then um, put it in a kiln, right? And harden it. So yeah, I mean like that's, that's really cool. All right. So, you know, <laughs> that's perfect for you guys. All right. This card is going to be the energy that you will be possessing during this time frame, uh, which will also inherently have some advice in it as well. For Taurus, please. November 23rd through December 6th. One card. Oh, beautiful. We got the moon. Take note of intuitive messages. So, you know, this kind of, this singer of connection that I was talking about, you know, connecting with spirit. And I feel like, yes, the, and the moon goes through stages, right? And there's this unknown, this being malleable and kind of flowing. And the moon and the earth are so dependent on each other. So I feel like, you know, this is the energy of the period. You are the moon. That's really beautiful. So you're kind of revolving around the earth and changing accordingly to the shifts that take place. That's really beautiful. Okay, we have night. Be brave and honest. Look at that. All right, so first impressions, we don't really have any water, right? The moon can be seen as a water element, but I'm looking at this knight of plumes and this arrow pointing right at the moon, looking at the moon, and I'm getting more of like the Egyptian kind of uh, moon, which they saw the moon as air, right? Thought. So I'm kind of, you know, wanting to say, especially with this desert here at the bottom, yeah, and then we see this uh, summer card with the uh, water here below it. And it's making me feel like if you can get into water, right, take a spiritual bath, right, which is going to make the earth element a little bit more malleable and um, drink lots of water, right? We have here and here, the emperor and the king of stones, your earth and your water, fire, right? So we need something kind of counteracted a little bit. <laughs> uh, because, you know, then we have the Knight of Blooms, which is water in the future. Uh, so, just to kind of, like, help that along, right? Because we do have heart here and here, but they're both air signs. So, our, you know, there's this uh, need to balance the heart and the mind and the heart, I, you know... Uh, but the heart is air. I just remembered that. <laughs> I was going to, because we, we uh, equate it with emotions. And, you know, I do see that. But, you you know, here we've got this, this heart is, you know, it's sweating, sweating blood. So there's this need to replenish it, I'm feeling. Okay. So with that out of the way, make sure you're, you know, because right now I kind of feel like you're a little bit parched. There's there's this need for water. Uh, yeah, because you might be feeling, you know, and I'm drawn to this eight of bones and, you know, the cerebral fluid that runs through our spine. I'm feeling like, you know, there's this need to, you know, because this is rigid, right? If we if it's not that fluid isn't moving and as I, I'm doing like spinal flexes right now. <laughs> um, so drink that and you might want to look into uh, some spinal flex exercises, right? Um, exercises for the spine. I'm just feeling that for some reason. 
Okay, probably because this straight line, right? Think about your posture. Okay. <laughs> so we'll go over here to your past, this God of Plumes. And, you know, really do get, you know, this moon, you know, this is like some truth that you've found, this this um, new way of thinking, perhaps a new idea for some of you. But it's the embodiment of air. And I do get this this very, you know, because we've, we've got, um, and it's giving you this confidence, this beautiful confidence. And we do have, you know, the lovers here, this is, uh, full moon eclipse in Gemini. And I forgot to mention in my intro that it is an eclipse. Yeah, you're feeling that, right? This is you. You're really feeling this this eclipse. And the thoughts that, you know, we have Mercury. Ah, yes, Mercury in Scorpio is making, uh, it's going to be in opposition to Uranus in Taurus. So yeah, but that obviously like, you know, I'm really getting this, um, you know, these downloads that are happening, these ideas that, that are popping into your head. And thankfully you've had this, you know, it's like you've, um, yeah, and that's what I, I'm getting that you mastered the air element right which leads you to now and that's why i'm feeling like you know now you need to be connecting with that water element to kind of balance it out a little bit you really connected with the air element and you know the mercury is in scorpio which is a water element but it's intense right which is why we're getting this this blood <laughs> And this three of plumes here, right? There's these intense feelings, these intense thoughts. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, and there might be this need for a sacrifice, right? This We see his milky eye here, which also brings in that intuition, right? The, the mind and the intuition meeting together. But... You know, I'm reminded of Odin here, right? Odin sacrificed his eye for, for knowledge. You know, and it might not necessarily be that you have to sacrifice an eye. But if you are, like, on some kind of vision quest here, right, with the desert, you know, there might be something that needs to be given up, whether that is, like, um, you know, fasting for a few days, right? Three of plumes here. Uh, and then we have the three crystalli here. I'm going to say crystalli. I don't know if that's the right way to say it or not. But, um, or perhaps, you know, a vow of silence for a day. You know, something, you can think about what it, but I, I feel like if you're really wanting to make this connection, I feel like there's like, a little bit of a sacrifice involved. Take what resonates though, right? But, you know, I'm just drawn to the fact that we have, and that this right here, right? The singer of connection is a six. And I do get this sense of healing the heart, connecting with spirit, right? It's connecting with your higher self here. Oh, kitty cats. <laughs> in the, the masculine and the feminine, there, there's, there's tremendous growth here, right? We see these little fern fronds growing up from it and it, with the sage here i mean like and we've been talking about how much you've grown during this period i think by the time because yeah uranus is at uh, seven degrees 
of uh, Taurus right now. So it, it's going to be there for a while, guys. <laughs> but, um, you know, by the end of this period, and it, this is, it's going right over top of my, um, and that this, this reading might uh, include me as well. Um, my Venus in Taurus, I just realized it in the, in the 10th house. Um, I, it's at eight degrees of Taurus. So it's been going right over top of mine and I haven't even paid a bit of attention to it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> so, you know, it's like by the end of this period, there's going to be so much growth. You're not even going to be able to recognize yourself you know, or myself, which uh, that's been happening for a while, but, you know, yeah, this is Saturn and Libra, so I'm really, you know, and Saturn is about restrictions, so I feel like there's something that you're going to be restricting, you know, on a voluntary basis in order to make this connection and this could be on the physical as well right i mean like i do tend to do more spiritual readings and i do feel spiritual reading here but this is very much uh you know there is that feeling of love is in the air and of course there it is restriction right so I kind of feel in that there's very little, the only bones, you know, the only earth we have are touching each other right here, right? So I kind of feel like this isn't necessarily uh, coming into fruition on the earthly plane just yet. But when you're in this energy, when you are making this connection with spirit, with your higher self, when you're finding this balance between the masculine and the feminine, the head and the heart, you are uh, making it, but you know, you're know you naturally going to bring love into your life, right? This is the future. The Knight of Blooms, the Knight of Cups, and he's got a sword. <laughs> he's a swordfish, right? So it's that you know this is carrying over. You know your plumes here. This is finding the balance between the two, and then this is being able to take that air energy and move forward in a very balanced way towards you know what your heart wants knowing that you know you did it the right way because he's looking right at this knight of plumes right be brave and honest oh, wow okay <laughs> oh my gosh i'm just like oh gosh wow wow I'm just wowing. Okay, so <laughs> under night was high priest, intend and create, right? There, I, I do feel like there's this um, creative process that's happening too. Sage, once again, be devoted and committed. Underneath that air guardian, shift your perception. Under that Lord, take, this is the emperor. In this deck underneath that the sun underneath that heart guardian right i mean like i could probably underneath that's the seer um <laughs> see beyond your current situation but and underneath that is the mirror guardian which you know it's about yes seeing yourself but also you know i i get that mirrored you know soulmate feeling come through with that, especially with the fairy who was kissed by pixies down below. That fairy who was kissed by pixies is also, you know, just love and being touched by spirit, right? There's a lot, there's a lot there. 
So we'll go below now to your subconscious mind. And we've got, you know, a 10 and a 10 here. So that's matching this. And, you know, this is your connection, you know, and that's just, that's connecting with everything. You know, I'm just, mm. and the fact that we've got the three, you know, because what we want is for your above to match the below. And I say, yes, I say, <laughs> you've got the belief, but it's very realistic, right? You're kind of, you're watching your thoughts. And you, because of that, you're more able to, you know, keep that those positive thoughts and take action on the negative. Take know when to take action. You know, you're watching this. You're subconsciously you're doing this. So when you see an opportunity arrive, you're ready to go. Right? You're really watching everything. You're even watching like your emotions. I feel like everything. You know, you're picking up on everything. And this is like this is transformational, right? We have here the Knight of Plumes with the butterfly, right? Okay, so now let's move out here to what's surrounding all this, right? This is the center of everything. It's beautiful energy here. <laughs> I just love this. You know, and there's this optimism here, too. Uh, you know, Gemini is a youthful energy. And that there is, you know, if you are making a decision, right, you're using your heart, you're, you're finding this balance. I don't necessarily see a decision, but, you know, very often there are decisions that we're making we're not even aware of, right? All right. So, this is kind of the first week energy, too. And, you know, I, there might be some action being taken, but for the most part, I just feel like you know what you want, right? Standing in your power. This, you know, there's this growth that's happening, this evolution happening in your mind. Um, and just, you know, very grounded, intellectual, uh, independent thought. Right? The emperor, the king of stones, the nine of bones. These are not people who are influenced by other people. This is complete independence. A very stable, right? This is the pelvis here. This is an elephant. This is very auspicious energy, I have to say. And we have, you know, this, you know, it's the ram, of course, but horns. And look at the growth on those horns. <laughs> Yeah, and this is just a testament to how much you have grown this year. Taking a minute to look at that and, you know, really appreciate yourself. <laughs> she just ran by to confirm that. I feel like, you know, this is making a plan too, right? Because we are, you know, although Mars, you know, has moved forward. It's slow going, right? There's still those three planets that are in Capricorn, right? There's kind of like this, this squeeze as they're getting, you know, uh, Jupiter and Saturn will both be leaving. You know, this is Saturn. Those last few uh, degrees of Capricorn are kind of going to feel restrictive. <laughs> Cats. 
All right. But I don't see, you know, I think you're just using this to your advantage. I think you're just planning. You can see what's, you know, this, the, and the, these guys are, you know, this is like being able to look at the past and the future at the same time, yet staying present. Stay, seeing outwards and seeing inwards at the same time. I mean, this is just like whew, wonderful energy. Okay, so the second week, right? I've, this feels like action to me. You know, we have these horns where here it was, you know, it's like the same, but now we're, we're leaping forward. You know, there's this forward momentum here in this second week. And of course, I do have to say, you know, we want to keep those arrows, right? If you watched the uh, intro, you know, we're we're aiming short at, to begin with, right? And then keep moving it outwards. But this is like, you have your truth. You have your transformation. You're ready. You know, there's integrity here, right? Be brave and honest here as, as the underlying energy. And taking this this plan that you have here and moving forward with it and very confident very sure of yourself right and knowing that's exactly what you want because you took the time here and it leads to this Night of Blooms, which, you know, and this is in the, uh, fire position, which is that creativity. This is, um, and, you know, this Night of Blooms is looking right at this Night of Plumes. So I feel like they are, like, very much connected, right? By you moving forwards. And it's like, I almost feel like this, um, perhaps where you've, you know, you've get, you, you're really connecting with spirit, right? That kind of channeling energy and, but you're also applying a more, uh, intellectual kind of thought process to it rather than just like moving into it and let it, you know, letting whatever, ha you know, it's like getting this uh, idea of what you want to create ahead of time. And that's kind of like just adding this new element and like that just like blows you out of the water, right? This is like a whole new creation that, that's, that's coming about because of that. Yeah, nice. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that's like, I feel it really needs to be addressed here. No, I feel like that's, it's feeling good to me. Yeah. Okay, let's get a piece of art and then we will get closing guidance and then we'll take a quick look at all the underlying energies together. All right. For Taurus, please. Drawn back here. Taurus, Taurus. To the left. Okay. The descent from the cross. Wow. And this is really striking over here, too. <clears throat> Painting 16. Okay. Sedoma. Hmm. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of, you know, perhaps, oh, the sacrifice. And look, this kind of makes a cross here. And, you know, this is like the dark part of it, this sacrifice. It feels, ah, the creative process, right? But then there's the resurrection afterwards. Wow. 
All right, going into the void here. And what you pull out, right? There's like these little glimmers that you pull out of the void. And that's growing here. You know, the moon is kind of very... Um, I want to say dark, but I don't want it to sound like, you know, like, oh, it's so dark, but more like, you know, it's just unknown, the unknown and kind of like, you know, the sacrifice that you're making by going into the unknown, you know, he's, they've got this black, you know, I'm almost saying like, this is this, right? This is kind of what supports you as we're coming out of this period, the darkness, the unknown. But you're pulling out like more and more of this light from going into those spaces. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go with the Moonology deck. It's sitting right in front of me. And <laughs> being as we have the moon here, and it seems like this new moon or full moon eclipse in Gemini is really affecting you in a good way. Let's see what the moonology has to say. For Taurus, please. Closing messages, closing guidance. For Taurus, November 23rd through December 6th. Cards, please. Oop, there they are. Okay. <laughs> we have New Moon in Libra. At the bottom of the deck, a new romantic cycle begins. And there is that romance, there is the um, balance, right? That's interesting. Okay, we've got, wow, you're very close to achieving your goal and your commitment is being tested. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> so, I mean, like, that's a, such a very clear message, right? I mean, like, this is saying you're on the right track. Um, any, you know, this sacrifice, right? This, whatever this is that, you know, you're, uh, giving up perhaps, or it might not be, but, um, whatever you're being put through at this time, right? It's just part of the process. Sometimes with this, uh, gibbous moon, I guess I'll go ahead and put these up here. Uh, there's like some little tweaks that need to, to happen, but this could very well just be like your thoughts, right? Right now, you're very cerebral, and I think that that's good. I mean, like I don't see a problem with it, but I do see this need to bring in some of that emotion as well, right? Finding that balance between the two. That's about all that I'm seeing here. I just think that um, this is saying, you know, keep it up, right? Make the little changes that need to be made, right? Be more malleable that, once again, that water element, trust, Trust in the process. Yeah. Stay committed. You've got this. It's beautiful. All right, let's take a look at the underlying. Yeah, you might be feeling very much like in the desert, right? Kind of um, dried up, dried out. 
you know, like even that maybe you're, you feel like you're seeing a mirage, but that mirage, right? That's the vision. That's exactly what this whole period is about is to develop that vision, right? What is the mirage? What, you know, um, because that tells you what your deep desire is, what dream you want to bring into fruition. This is kind of like we had to kind of clear the slate, dry everything up, and the mirage is kind of like what brings about the water. Hmm. And, you know, this new romantic cycle begins and the night. Be brave and honest, right? Because uh, Libra is about integrity. It is about truth. By doing that, you know, he's, he's battle-worn, right? Look at the scars. And we see a tear here, right? Open yourself up to the possibility of pain, right? Sometimes that pain is actually, you know, those tears are healing, right? Because he's crying doesn't make him any less of a night, right? In fact, maybe even more so. So allow yourself to cry. That's part of being brave here. And that is what's going to balance these scales. And I do feel like there's some kind of truth that needs to be expressed, right? With this Knight of Plumes here. And this could be in a creative way, right? Because the Knight is sitting beside and this Knight of Plumes is pointing at the moon here. Yeah, and this is your work. Right? This is what you've been building towards. This is what you've been creating. Both internally and externally, I feel. And you're going, you know, this this is just about feeling good, feeling love, feeling compassion, being touched by God. And realizing what that means. The importance of it. I feel like this guy up here is like winking at you. <laughs> and that's, be, you know, this is very earthy too. So the earth is like so supportive of you. And remember that, you know, there's this motherly energy coming from that. And I do think there's love on the way, right? A new romantic cycle begins. The fairy who was kissed by pixies. Even the emperor here. The lovers, right? There's, there's a lot here that... That says that, oh wow, underneath <laughs> underneath that was a hold your vision, right? They're, they couldn't get any more uh, direct with that. So keep it up, guys. You're doing awesome. And um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave you there. I hope this was helpful. I hope it resonated. Until next time, Taurus. Much love.